Hello YouTube. Um, I haven't made a vlog in four days it looks like. I also haven't made a uh, unsubscribe trailer for my channel. So maybe, I, maybe I'll make this vlog the actual trailer. Nah. Nee. Nee. So anyway, I'm gonna do another video and I have had this idea where I would just make a bunch of tabs in the browser as talking points because I am usually not very good at thinking of well, if I get going, I can I can just keep talking. So let's let's start with the first tab here. Your account has been approved for level two, buying long calls and puts. So I made this tweet on the twenty third. So that was Friday, last Friday. And my Trade King account was approved. Oh wait, I wanted to thank Pig Behind the Desk <laughs> and uh, Chris for the uh, for the faves on my time to lose all my money tweet. It's happened before. I yeah, I already talked about that. So anyway, first thing I did with my options privilege was purchase two contracts call contracts on orbital uh, yes yeah, so I guess I'm revealing my my position today even though it's not, it was it was good before it turned sort of sour today but everything is was red in the red today if you look across the markets except for radio shack <laughs> radio shack went up 10 percent while everything else went down so anyway uh, so options can be sort of, it just takes a little effort, I would say. I wouldn't say they're complex, it just takes a little effort to sort of grasp it. You know, just like a, a concept that the more you're around it, the more comfortable comfortable you'll become. But I think, you know, they're very useful tools. Maybe I'll explain it a little bit m more in depth in a in a very s in a specific video, but I want to make this sort of fast and loose. Uh, so anyway, I think it may have been on the. I think it was actually on Friday that I bought the option. So uh, you can see, back on Thursday, it was uh, forty cents. If you bought it back here, I actually bought it right here as it was going up in the Friday morning. I was like, what the heck? Something's crazy is happening here. <laughs> I just saw Orbital just start climbing. I heard rumors about the merger uh, with a ATK and uh, mergers usually mean an influx of capital and excitement on the markets. The news has been out for months already, so I think I just got lucky. I just saw that that break that morning, and I said, "Well, breaks, breaks gonna break, you know." <laughs> so anyway, I got in here. Uh, so at eighty cents, you know, or no, it was a a dollar, a dollar ten, I believe. If I got in at fifty-five cents, a dollar ten. Actually, see, I made this chart over here, profit graph. With the software. Sorry for jumping around, but, but. I uh, wanted to make an interactive graph where I could slide a slider and see the the profit. So at two thirty dollars, or yeah, yeah, two thirty dollars strike or calls call um <laughs> call options with the strikes at thirty and two of them. Yep, and then I paid fifty five cents per uh, share in the contracts, and each contract is a hundred shares. So it'd be fifty-five dollars times two. It's one hundred and ten dollars plus commission, which is six dollars and twenty-five cents. Is I'm in the hole one hundred and sixteen dollars and twenty-five cents for a couple of pieces of paper. That just mean that means I have the option to buy uh, Orbital at thirty dollars per share by a certain uh, date. So. You see here, at the bottom, we have the price of the underlying stock. So this is the price of Orbital down here. 
So, right here is the zero mark, so this is a break even point. So, right here is a break even. So, I'll have a dollar and 75 cent profit if Orbital gets to $30.59. Because I, that means I could sell, I could meet, I could call the call up the guy who sold me the option and say, hey, well, not literally, you know, I just, it's a, it's a click of a mouse, but you, you call him up and say, hey, I want to buy uh, Orbital, but I don't want to buy it for $30.59, which is what the the market is going for, so I'd rather use my option that I spent $110 buying from you, you know, a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, to pull those uh, the stocks from you, or you know, call those stocks from you for thirty dollars instead, and then I can immediately re resell them on the market at that you know at fifty nine more cents if there's a a guy bidding three thirty fifty nine, then I can just pocket that profit of a dollar seventy five. But the thing is, as you go up thirty one dollars, we're already at seventy percent return on our in investment. So we've made $81 profit at $31. 183 dollars profit at 31.50. So that's 158% return on investment. But the interesting thing to think about is you don't even have to exercise this option. It doesn't even have to hit that uh, strike point for you to make a profit. If you bought it if you bought the um, call option while the price was low, and I guess the implied volatility would also be low, I'm not too um, strong on the whole uh, concept of implied volatility yet, but I'm a noob, and I am learning. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so this is, should be a cool tool, so you can adjust, like I said, you wanted see what would happen if you had 10 contracts and you bought them at 55 cents each you could have a profit of three thousand dollars or you know about three thousand dollars if it hits around uh, 33.57 with 10 contracts with the initial investment of what is it five hundred fifty six dollars and 25 cents pretty um, powerful and your downsides are limited you know you never lose more than your more what more than what you put in but you can lose everything that you put in and the guy who's selling you that contract for hundred and ten dollars or you know this in this example five hundred and fifty six dollars and twenty five cents he wants it to expire worthless he wants it to expire down here where you know no one's gonna call call those uh, stocks from him you know because he'd rather keep his stock and then just keep that $556 on the options that he sold. I use this software for, for programming that chart. It's pretty nice, it's really simple. Like the basic example, it shows these things. Uh, control U. And it's just a, like, it just plots a, an, an array of XY coordinates. So 0, 3, Four, eight, eight, five, zero, three, four, eight, eight, five. Let's see, so that's that first one there. Anyway, it's good. Um, this is an interesting article. It just talked about neuroeconomics. I think is the name of the stud, the uh, studies, which made me think of this actually today um, they have these EEG headsets um, I'm not even sure what one's called like, yeah, emotive or something <laughs> must be one, yeah so you plug one of these in to your, you plug this onto your head you record the signal so you have the EEG headset and then you record the signal as you're looking across charts and then, and then, um, I guess y it, you could be, I don't know, you'd have to have it pick up 
like say what URL you're looking at and know the symbol that you're researching. So it'd store that brain pattern plus the symbol and then like what happens the days after. So did that stock go up after you researched it or did it go down? And then it'll look at your brain patterns and hopefully, you know, your brain will pick up on certain uh, signals in the uh, in the data that uh, maybe the user within the brain itself can't pick up, I guess, you know, so you're taking signals out of your brain that you're not even aware of and trying to match it up with what happens in the future. So like the inner psychic that um, we're unable to access because we're so sane. <laughs> So we need to use machines to pull out this, uh, this these psychic elements, I, su I suppose, or these deeper insights into the workings of nature and the, the stock market. <laughs> so anyway, another interesting article. This is like a circuit um, that stimulates the tongue. So these are just little pads that get turned on, on and off at certain frequencies. So it says stimulation came in triplets of positive across 50 microseconds. And pulses were delivered at a rate of 200 pulses per second every 20 milliseconds. So this, they were saying that maybe it created a um, the ability for MS patients to walk better, or to learn to walk better. But there's been some, there was some criticism about the, the way the study was set up, like maybe some of the healthier guys were put into the active, into the active group, and, and, and then just uh, unhealthier ones were put into the uh, sham group, and so that's how they got the positive return on the research. This is an interesting one too, another medical uh, and I can't say breakthrough, just medical idea. Wearable technology for Parkinson's gait. So like Parkinson's people have problems with freezing, that was the whole thing with the old um, laser cane, but this guy decided to put little vibrating motors in the sole of the shoe so during certain uh, cycles of walking, you um, you feel the vibration. So like when the heel hits the bottom, and just gives the the user an extra like neurological cue to keep moving in the right way. Pretty cool. I might have to try and build that sometime. Ah, I saw this on my Twitter feed, which was pretty neato. It's a uh, solar powered, um, it's a Bluetooth low energy uh, beacon using this uh, linear tech uh, nano power buck booster DC DC with energy harvesting battery life extender. So, it's good for solar panel applications, I guess. Does a bunch of <coughs> voltage regulation and pumping, I suppose. I haven't looked at the data sheet yet. Maybe I should download it. Yeah, there you go. I'll read it. So, Moot left 4chan. Oh. <laughs> See, Moot. Actually, no, I'm not even on 4chan anymore. My uh, defrag simulator got popular. Let's See, I don't have a. I have. Ad, I installed Adblock Plus this year. So, if we disable it, that should pop up. Yeah, see. What ifs? Currency trading for dice. <laughs> see, it's it's crazy. Uh, since I've had it turned off, I haven't been able to see all the uh, targeted ads. They're like, oh, this guy's into trading now. 
Let's sell him some dummies books and trade. So yeah, press press F11 and enjoy, you know. Dang. Also, secret tip. Um, the number keys at the top of the QWERTY board, like zero, will make it go super fast. <laughs> um, one will make it super slow. And then, like, all the numbers in between. I forget what I set the formula up to be. It's like some sort of uh, 1.5 seconds, but then this was some sort of weird function in between. Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, that's that. Uh, oh, it's, oh, F11. <laughs> Let's close that. that. <gasps> Shapeways Shop. <laughs> I haven't talked about this yet. We got Apple Discord pendant, Bacteriophage virus pendant, first one, the Compost Tree of Life pendant, and the Mushroom Ear Cuffs. So this is a um, Discordian symbol, the goddess Eris, goddess of discord in the ancient Greeks. There's actually a, um, yeah, let's see, there's a escape hole for the powder at the bottom, bottom there. But there's little um, hooks in there to hold those center pieces of those, like the alpha there and the sigma there. I don't know what that is, the K. Alpha, lambda, lambda, I have no idea. Sigma, tau, and then I have no idea. <laughs> Next. So there we go. Bacteriophage. Anyway, um, I tried to have this printed off in stainless steel, but it didn't work. They just sent me this email saying they printed it twice, but the the legs are too thin, and unsupported it to make it through production. Make it through production. <laughs> Consider thickening them or adding a base. Yeah. Anyway, it worked in um, in the metallic plastic. That was successful. So I'll have to think about how to get it to work in steel. This pendant turned out. Pretty good. I liked it. Um, this is. I'm excited. This this one I'm the most excited for. The um, mushrooms, ear cuff. I actually um, modeled it after Enoki, I think mushrooms. Enoki. It's like a Japanese mushroom. Yeah, look at these beauties. Let's look at that. Um, forbi it's forbidden. Just too, um, too beautiful. Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Anyway, I sort of used that as a, um, a basis for the idea. And, but that's sort of like the cordyceps fungus that grows in the back of or inside the brains of insects. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> look at this. So it infects their brain and then it makes them crawl up towards the light and then it fruits, the fungus fruits out of their body and puts its spores everywhere else. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, there's some. Um, <laughs> I guess there's a lame horror movie about human cordyceps. Yeah, the cordyceps principle. Sorry, uh, it's probably. Yeah, it, well, it looked really lame. Honest. I have to be honest. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, anyway, internet. How fun. Um. Yeah, so this is my favorite one. So it'll, when you put it over the back of your ear, it looks like you got the cordyceps fungus growing out of your head. Oh yeah! Um, the next thing I'm working on, I don't know. This is the beginning of a um, pill bug. 
I guess I'll wrap it up because I've probably been talking for over 20 minutes. I'll, uh, I'll see, you, see you next time, folks. I hope that wasn't too boring. Bye.